we keep learning more about what happens in gout and how exactly the inflammatory process goes on, uh, we know a lot more than we did. We know, for example, that uric acid crystals are st stimulate the osteoclast. Those are the cells that break down bone. We know that patients with severe gout over time get these erosions of bone, and you can look at the x-ray of the foot, and you'll see this chewed out area of bone, and how is that all happening? So one thing we know is that it activates these osteoclasts that break down bone. It's actually a study is, is just getting started. It was just discussed at the meeting. There's a study getting started looking at a medicine that we use for osteoporosis called zeledronate and taking that and giving it to gout patients to try to see if you can prevent some of that damage. But that's, that's a study that's just getting going. But we know that osteoclasts are part of it. Also, we know that osteoblasts, the cells that build up bone, that those cells are become less viable. They, they die quicker in the setting of uric acid crystals. We also know that chondrocytes, cartilage cells, also become less viable in the setting of uric crystals. Uh, we've also learned where the erosion tends to occur in gout patients, and it's right around the tophus. It's not the thickened lining tissue. We know that just like in rheumatoid arthritis, you can get a thickened lining tissue in gout, but it seems the erosion is happening right around the tophus. There's been some nice work done where they looked at what kind of inflammatory chemicals are being released from the tophus. And it turns out interleukin-1, which is the most important inflammatory chemical in gout, and that seems to have a lot of ability to lead to erosion, that that's being released by a tophus even when there's no inflammation obvious around it. Patients will have, let's say, you could look at their big toe, and you'd see a bump there, but there's no redness, there's no heat, there's nothing that looks like an obvious inflammation. But if that tophus was removed, and it was done as part of a study, if you take off that tophus and then study it and try to stain it for the inflammatory chemicals that are there and look for the cells that are there, you'll see that even in that quiet phase, there still are inflammatory cells and there's still interleukin-1 being released. So that there's an ongoing process of interleukin-1 release, which is causing ongoing damage to the joint. And there's still more to learn about how much of the erosion is directly related to the uric acid crystal and how much is related to tissue response to the uric acid crystal. But I think we're, we're much closer now to knowing that it happens right around where the tophus is. Uh, we know that, the, um, that that's the area of maximum inflammation. We know that we're affecting the cartilage cells, the chondrocytes. We're affecting making the osteoblast weaker, so you're building less bone there. We're making the osteoclast stronger, so you're moving more bone out. So we're getting a lot closer to understanding how you can see patients come in and look at the x-ray and half the bone around their toe is gone because of all this chronic ongoing 